Coming up on GET, we'll take a look at the new Mid-County Library, a peek behind the center renovations, and watch a recap of sixth grade camp. Are you a bookworm? Then you might want to check out the new Mid-County Library. Anisha, Max, and Isaac tell us about the new construction. In 2012, St. Louis voters approved a six-cent tax increase, which would allow the St. Louis County Library organization to spend $120 million to renovate all of their branches across the city. On September 4th, the Mid-County branch in Clayton opened after months of renovation and has created many new learning opportunities for students at CHS. I like everything about the new library. I don't know if you remember using the old one, but it was everything was kind of brown. Um, there weren't enough power outlets. Um, the new building, it's beautiful, it's bright, it's clean, um, and it has it's built for the 21st century, so it has enough of everything that everyone wants. Well, I love that it's reopened now because it's within walking distance. So when we're closed um, in you know the evenings, um, people could study there and work there. So I think that's great. Um, you know, I definitely think every community needs a public library, so when it closes for a while, uh, I definitely feel like, you know, um, the community misses out. The new library, we actually made a really conscious effort to create separate spaces for all the different groups that use the library. So the teens now have their own area that's kind of blocked off from the rest of the building where they can have privacy, they can study, they can hang out. We have a quiet study room um, that is absolutely silent. We have a separate room for kids where they can you know, play and be kids and be loud and not disturb the rest of the building. Um, we also have a brand new meeting space that can be reserved in advance. We have the uh, new business center, which provides scanning, faxing, copying, as well as access to all of the computers that we have. And we've added um, quiet study rooms that can be reserved um, for small group work. So, and I'm sure you guys obviously noticed this too, that the, the kids area is about five times bigger <laughs> than the teen area, and that's pretty normal for most public libraries. Um, kids usually have a bigger collection, so they need a lot of space just because they have more stuff. Um, whereas your age group, the YA collection is typically fairly small, um, and you guys don't need a whole lot of space to run around and throw blocks at each other or whatever, you know. Um, one thing I love that both areas share is the use of color. I just love the fact that both areas are like bright and happy and inviting. I get a good like end endorphin rush every time I see. I'm like, oh, color, pink, pink chairs. I love it. So hopefully you guys feel the same way too. Um, we also have a lot of services that we've added since Mid County closed. Um, we now have, um, in addition to video games, we now have tabletop games that you can check out. We have Chromebooks that can be checked out and used within the building. We have Wi-Fi hotspots that you can check out and take with you if you're traveling or going on vacation and want to make sure that you can stay connected. Our hope is that the people of Clayton will use these facilities as they see fit um, and let us know if there's something that we're not providing that they think we could provide. Um, our goal is to serve this community the best way that we can and we rely on feedback for that. So we hope people will let us know. This has been Anisha, Max, and Isaac reporting for GET. Have you been wondering where all our parking spots went? Or where Subway has gone? Ryan, Koji, and Michael give us an inside look on the center renovations. So at the end of the renovation, we will have a 1,600 square foot addition on the first floor, and they will have a 4,200 square foot addition on the second floor. Twenty year anniversary next May, so we're hoping to have all the work done for to celebrate our anniversary at that time. So as you know, once a building is twenty years old, it does need a little bit of a facelift. So a lot of the, the things we're doing, new paint, new wall pads, um, new LED lighting, some of that technology has changed, so that'll help us be more efficient. But yes, we're also hoping that some of our changes will attract and retain members to the center of Clayton as well. A lot of what we're doing is renovation, but we're building about a 6,000 square foot addition that will have um, 4,200 extra square feet of fitness, and then we'll also relocate our offices, which will open up space to create a party room for the pool and a new youth activity center. And then we're also turning the existing power lifting room into a room for the high school. 
We will relocate and um, reconfigure the current fitness center. We'll relocate the track um, to allow for a little bit more uh, equipment upstairs. We will be moving all of the power lifting equipment from the first floor up to the second floor and then we will enlarge the fitness center. Our own dedicated uh, free weight room for Clayton High School. So it will be in the footprint of the current free weight room uh, that we have right now. Uh, all that equipment will be gone. They're gonna pull up all the flooring and put all brand new flooring down. We're gonna get our Clayton logo, the athletic C, which is the C with the Greyhound going through it, uh, down on the floor, printed on the floor. Um, there will be essentially 12 different workout stations for students to do uh, and athletes to do their core lifts um, with then some auxiliary lift stations around the edges. Student access shouldn't change, so as right now the students have access to the center of Clayton until 4.30 every day. They will still have access to the renovated fitness center, uh, all of the new cardio equipment, and the good thing is, is that the first floor, what is currently the power lifting room, is that is going to be renovated for a Clayton High School use space. Uh, so that will not be available to the general member public. So that will be a, a room just for the high school students. So it'll be utilized for PE and for athletics. Um, I kind of liken it to when we rebuilt the outdoor pool in 2003, is that we had seen this sort of a, a a dip in usage of the pool over the over the like the five years prior to that and then as soon as we built a new one it really just jumped right back up so I do think we will and we have more residents in the community now so really trying to target those new residents that are coming in and are looking for something new and fresh. Maybe you've heard about the recent climate strike. Sam and Lucia tell us about what happened. CNN. All right, breaking news as Hurricane Irma continues to show no mercy. Just a hellstorm. Imagine a world where hurricanes and heat waves wreak havoc as temperatures continue to rise. Where politicians deny the problem, flooding the streets of American cities half a world away. As climate change is a problem. Um, that I'm invested in, uh, it's something that I've learned a lot about recently, it's something that I care about. I believe that the future right now doesn't look so good for my generation. So we will see flooding, um, the sea levels rising, uh, food shortages across the world, water shortages across the world, um, places made inhospitable. People are realizing this is a problem and people are aware of the youth climate movement. I wish that people would really look at who the issue is impacting most and highlight some more faces and some more people who are part of the climate justice movement. September 20th were some of the biggest protests around the world um, that we've seen in recent years regarding any issue. For people like me, students at school, that's something we can sacrifice right here, right now to show how much we care about this. I think there's like a really fine balance between individual actions that we should be focusing on and calls that we should be making for policymakers and big corporations because I think people can get so caught up in the little things that they forget about what's really causing so much of climate change. Great. You should still do small things in your life because doing them is better than not doing them. But the most important thing you can do is be involved politically. Of course, it's difficult to make predictions about the future and I could be wildly wrong, but I think it's not unlikely that there will be continued support among students for this movement and eventually it will lead to large-scale political change. Have you almost been hit by a car? Michael, Sam, and Adam teach us how to cross the street.
remember sixth grade camp? Not really, but Nima, Ben, and Chance give us a flashback of what it was like. Sam, what day is it? Isn't it Tacky Tuesday? 